Hi everyone. Uh, this is the second week of Advent. This is the week of peace. And our conversation that we had about peace, we're gonna save for the end. I'm gonna get right to the message we had this week. Like every week, we do this video for those of you who could not be with us. You can take the teaching, take the conversations, and have them with your roommates, have them with your small group, have them um, with your family as a devotion time. This is designed for you guys to be a part of our church where you are and to have these conversations with your people. So we're continuing on in our forgiveness series. And we're now we're moving on to God's justice, where justice and forgiveness are the twin edges of God's sort of love. So that's a really big description phrase, but picture God's sword being wielded and one side is forgiveness and one side is justice and all of it is his love towards us. So over the last few weeks, we've been talking about forgiveness and we're going to talk about forgiveness even to the new year here. And just a recap of our high points are is that this is different from all other religions and that God judges and is merciful at the same time. And remember that only the power of the cross can break a pattern of sinful behavior. That's what makes repentance a gift from God to us, because only Jesus gives us the power, because he died on that cross, he gives us that power to break over sin. Now after Christmas, we're going to start transitioning the talk to about the command of forgiving others. And I know, I know this is a tough one, but since we are so forgiven, this is where the gift of forgiveness from God goes into reaches into others in our lives. But I know, I know this is a tough one because this command means we have to re forgive those people. So for the next three weeks, we're going to talk about forgiveness still, but also about the pains of life and why those people have hurt you. And where is the justice in this? Remember God's two-edged sword. Where is the justice for what happened and why should you forgive those people when they've hurt you so much, when it is not safe? But in January, I'm going to give you guys some brave new teaching. So stick with me, wait for those lessons, be excited for those lessons, because I think, I really believe in what I will be teaching will make this really, this hard part, this commandment that is there, make it, make it doable and safe and very healing for you particularly. But this week we're talking about God's justice because each of us have suffered injustice. Our world is broken, evil seems to win, and God's justice seems to lose, right? Well, this is where God's justice is found. And I'm gonna use this verse a lot tonight. It's Psalm 97, verse two. Dark clouds surround him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Catch this. Dark clouds surround him. Righteousness and justice are his the foundation of his throne. Now, when I think of the throne room of God, I don't think of darkness. I think of bright light, this glistening pearl, golden throne where God is sitting on and Jesus of the light of the world is sitting up there and a lot of light, a lot of angels and a lot of singing and worship and light. And yet here, this Psalm just grabbed me this year of 2020 when I read it, dark clouds surround him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Like how could this light of the throne room have dark clouds at the base as a foundation? And so my son Kenneth and I went through a whole Bible search of what these dark clouds are. And you guys, this is an amazing truth. Hang on for some big stuff here. We found in the beloved Psalm of one Psalm 139, which is quoted often, and it's for good reason, but verse 12 says, but even in the darkness, I cannot hide from you. Darkness, I go. To you, the night shines as bright as day. 
Darkness and light are the same to you. Darkness in the throne room and light in the throne room is possible, right? Plus, God is with me in the darkness. And I'm telling you guys, my life has had some pretty dark times. We are invited into that darkness because God is there. And that is where I find righteousness and justice in those dark clouds. And isn't this what we want from God? I know this is what I want from God. I want something to make my world straight again, for the unfair things to be made fair, to stop the injustices that I see every day, to stop the injustices that break my heart. And it turns out justice is found in the dark clouds, which are mentioned throughout the Bible. So we're about to go on to this Bible search here. You ready? There's some verses you can study at home. They'll be included on the Facebook page if you want them. Exodus 13, 21 through 22. And if you remember from the Exodus story that the Israelites, when they're going through the desert, were led out by a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire by night. Just to give you those verses, the Lord went ahead of them. He guided them during the day with a pillar of cloud and he provided light at night with a pillar of fire. This allowed them to travel by day or by night. And the Lord did not remove the pillar of cloud or pillar of fire from its place in front of the people. Of course, this cloud was dark. It had to be seen in the daytime, in the light, right? So it had to be visible enough so you could follow it. And of course, this is where God's righteousness and justice was coming from. It was like finally, if you read the Exodus story, God said, this is enough. I'm going to rescue my people and have this Exodus story. And he's leading them in his righteousness and justice through the desert to their new place of living. And it's in that dark cloud. But it goes more in Exodus. Exodus 19, it says how God spoke to Moses out of a thick cloud, which I'm going to assume means dark. So what this verse says, Then the Lord said to Moses, I will come to you in a thick cloud, Moses, so the people themselves can hear me when I speak with you. Then they will always trust you. For the unfair things to be made fair, right? Of course that cloud was dark. This is where, in Exodus 20, where we get the Ten Commandments. So Moses enters this dark cloud where God is meeting his people, meeting his representative Moses, who's actually called in Deuteronomy, friend of God. Interesting to be called a friend of God, but when you're in that dark cloud enough with God, I guess you become friends. And Moses meets God in this dark cloud, and this is where we get our Ten Commandments and the rest of the laws. Of course, righteousness and justice, the Ten Commandments that gird us, came out of that dark cloud. So here is another mention of darkness mixed with the light of fire. It's Deuteronomy 4, 11 and 12. Same Exodus story, by the way. You came near and stood at the foot of the mountain while flames from the mountain shot into the sky. The mountain was shrouded in black clouds and deep darkness. And the Lord spoke to you from the heart of the fire. You heard the sounds of his words, but didn't see his form. There was only a voice. And this same story is repeated in Deuteronomy 5, 22 and 23. God desires to be near his people so much that he is willing to mask the fullness of his glory with dark clouds in order to interact directly with his people. That's what this scene is. He wants to be with his people. So he uses the dark clouds of righteousness and justice to do that seems like a lot of extra when God just could have sent a messenger or something. But no, God loves mankind so much to come personally, first in the thick darkness and then later in the sun. Both deliver righteousness and justice. Now we're going to get to the New Testament here, but I want to take a moment to think about this. When is Jesus born? In the darkness. And what happens? on Good Friday, midday, dark clouds surrounded that cross. 
where the righteousness and justice for our sins was laid upon the cross. Wow, right? But it continues on. In Solomon's prayer for the new temple, and just to give you this, this part of history, is Solomon built this temple, and then they had a service where they invited God's glory to come in. And this is how it looked. 1 Kings 8.12 then Solomon prayed, O Lord, you have said that you would live in a thick cloud of darkness. This is repeated in 2 Chronicles 6 1. The cloud that entered the temple that day, some songs have this, this vision in it, was a dark cloud. Because this is where the righteousness and justice of God is in his temple, now in our temples. My favorite psalm is Psalm 18, and this is deep in this psalm. It says, nine verses, verses 9 through 11, He opened the heavens and came down. Dark storm clouds were beneath his feet. Mounted on a mighty angelic being, he flew, soaring on the wings of the wind. He shrouded himself in darkness, veiling his approach with dark brain clouds. Now this is my favorite psalm. I'm going to preach from it, reference it often, because this psalm has shaped my life. I was 20 years old when this psalm became real to me and I cannot get away from it because it's, just, it's a visual expression of when I pray. What God does in the heavenlies on behalf of me and I need that. And now just this year, I mean, this is brand new to me too, learning about these dark clouds and to have my special psalm being God stooping down to come to me because I called to him on dark clouds he is coming down with righteousness and justice for my cause this means so much to me so one of the old testament prophets nahum it's a very tiny book in the bible he wrote this in chapter 1 verse 3 the lord is slow to get angry but his power is great and he never lets the guilty go unpunished he displays his power in the whirlwind and the storm the billowing clouds are the dust beneath his feet. Of course, whirlwind and storm are dark clouds, right? And yet here's another verse too, where it talks about God being slow to anger. I think since we've begun Larger Story Church, we've had at least one verse almost every week about God being slow to anger. No matter where we look in the Bible, this verse is there, that his righteousness and justice comes from his love of us which is why he's slow to get angry he's letting us have a chance um, then finally in the new testament here first thessalonians 4 17 then together with them we who are still alive and remain on the earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the lord in the air then we'll be with the lord forever so this is talking about when Jesus is going to return for us and he's going to come in the clouds. I've always assumed that those clouds would be white, light. The trumpet's going to blow and it's going to be Jesus in these light white clouds. But now I'm convinced those are going to be dark clouds because he's coming with his righteousness and justice. And the final judgment is coming. So those clouds are going to be dark. Then I want to go back to this one verse in Exodus. It's a good one. Exodus 20, 21. As the people stood in the distance, Moses approached the dark cloud where God was. God is in the darkness. He is in the darkness that overtakes you. He is in the darkness that injustice causes. The darkness is where everything starts. What did we say last week when we were talking about Advent, hope? Hope begins in the dark. And I read this week in one of my Advent devotionals, Advent always begins in the dark. God is with us in the darkness. This is actually our beginning. The dark clouds surround God with righteousness and justice as the very foundation of God's throne. The base upon everything is built with those dark clouds. And Psalm 89, 14 says, Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. It just repeats 97 and 2. 
and it adds unfailing love and truth walk before you as attendants. My life is marked by injustice. I have times of darkness. Yet in that darkness is where unfair things are made right. And thankfully in that messy middle of waiting for the things to be made right, I need unfailing love and truth close to me. Think about this. When you are hurt, when life hurt you or someone has hurt you and something has been unfair and unjust has happened to you, what do you want? You want to be loved and you want the truth to come out. So in this Psalm 89, 14, righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Unfailing love and truth walk before you as attendants. The very things we want are at the foundation of God's throne. To know that there's unfailing love for us by God, hopefully by others also, and that the truth, the justice is going to come and the truth is there and that what has been wronged in our life will be made, be made right by the truth. This begins at the foundation of God's throne and that's where his justice and righteousness is. So let's talk about the time that is required for God to make the unjust just. Because, as you know, it doesn't happen like that, does it? It doesn't happen when I pray, God immediately makes that just again and my life gets straightened out. It takes time. There's a really messy middle. So, oh, and I want to start saying this remember this whole thought came together with my son Kenneth and I we were talking about injustice and this verse came to us in our study and we did this whole long Bible study but for our son Kenneth he's the one doing a long prison sentence where he's seen a lot of injustice over his many years so this messy middle of time and the injustice that we have to live with and live through, it's messy. It's really messy for him. So with that thought, that uncomfortable thought, ponder this big thought. God is always doing a thousand things in every one thing he does. God is dealing with the millions of broken hearts whose broken hearts hurt other broken hearts and there's this ripple effect going back generations. To fix my broken heart, time is needed. To also fix the broken hearts I've hurt and to fix the broken hearts from generations ago who have hurt me. So when I pray Psalm 18 and God acts in the heavenlies and it's, it's, it's quick and he's stooping down to reach out to me, he hears my prayers and he's, on those dark clouds know that God is always doing a thousand things in that very one thing to make the righteousness and the justice on this earth. God is all about righting the wrong, finding justice for the injustice. This is done in God's forgiveness and God's justice. It's a two-edged sword. You are forgiven. This is God's justice. And that justice looked like injustice on the cross. You can forgive others. God will take care of the justice. Remember about the darkness. And that is where God is. A lot to think about there, right? And dark clouds in that throne room. May you have great conversations based around these many, many scriptures to come to understand God's love of forgiveness and justice. Now, amen to this part. I just want to close on our Advent part. Today is peace. Or the, this is the week of peace, not just today, but we are focusing on peace. And so we had a conversation 
Well, let me give you the quote that began our conversation. In a culture, this is from a lady I'm, whose Advent readings I'm reading, named Mindy Larson, and she wrote this, in a culture that is heavily centered on doing all the things, even self-care and rest have become what we can do. Buy the bath bombs to soak your tight muscles. Escape the stress of the day by pouring a gl glass of wine and getting your Netflix on. Get away to a remote island to rejuvenate. While these are all restful activities and wonderful in, in and of themselves, the truth is we cannot and will not find true rest outside of Christ. So this is the question I had. Self-care is this trend right now. We're all doing it. But when did self-care become something that we do and not rest? Hmm? And now we're in Christmas where it's all about buying all the things and attending all the things. So we had this discussion about what do we do to find peace? What do we do for our quiet times that works? What do we do to find rest? And we had a great conversation about that and lots of really good ideas. Now these are all going to be compiled into a document and it's going to be made available to everybody who's a part of a larger story church. So if we have your email, you'll, have, you'll receive this in the email on Tuesday. And like I said, we had a lot of ideas, varying ideas. There's going to be some there that work for you. And to close, I want to use this quote that I also use to close our conversation with. That's a aha. And I want you to have the same aha. It's from a book called Sabbath by a guy named Wayne Muller. And he said, if we do not allow for a rhythm of rest in our overly busy lives, illness becomes our Sabbath. Our pneumonia, our cancer, our heart attack, our accidents create Sabbath for us. Aha. Uh -huh. May you find peace this Christmas season. May Advent for you begin in the dark, be times of peace and rest. And may we see you next week on Friday night. Thanks for being a part of this church. We love you. Amen.